Have you ever wondered how a freshly cut log from the forest ends up as the lumber we see in homes, furniture and buildings across the United States? Behind each piece is a massive, precise and fully industrialized process that transforms a tree into a standardized, durable material ready for use in thousands of projects. In this video, we'll show you how a mega factory in the United States, capable of processing tons of wood every day, operates. In the United States, wood plays a much more profound role than that of a simple building material. It is, in essence, the backbone of the entire modern real estate sector. The tradition of building homes with timber-framed structures is part of the country's architectural identity, and this preference is supported by two key factors. The availability of vast tracts of forest and the relatively competitive cost of processing timber. Thanks to this combination, nearly 9 out of 10 new homes are built using timber-framed systems, demonstrating its enormous market share, but its importance doesn't end with home construction. Wood also acts as a link connecting multiple areas of the American economy. Furniture, transportation, manufacturing, interior design, panel production, and even energy sectors that use waste as biomass. Directly or indirectly, this material influences industrial decisions, investments and supply chains that affect millions of workers and consumers. Precisely because of its central role, any change in trade conditions or import policies has an immediate impact. Canada, for example, is the largest external supplier of softwood lumber to the United States, and this relationship has historically been crucial for maintaining a stable supply and controlled prices. However, a simple adjustment to tariffs is enough to generate a domino effect. When import tariffs increased from 14.5% to 34.5%, costs in the domestic market rose almost immediately. The price of lumber skyrocketed, directly affecting builders, manufacturers and end consumers. This increase translated into a significant rise in the final price of homes. Building a typical house now required tens of thousands of dollars more simply due to the increased cost of structural materials. For many American families, this difference can be the deciding factor between owning a home or not. Lumber, therefore, becomes a sensitive indicator of the balance between politics, economics and quality of life taken together. All these factors show that wood in the United States is not simply a natural resource. It is an economic pillar, an industrial engine and a social component that directly influences daily life. Understanding its importance means understanding how seemingly technical decisions can completely transform the real estate market and the future of millions of homes. The journey of timber begins long before any log reaches the sawmill. It all starts in the vast forests that stretch across much of North America, where each tree is evaluated with extreme care. There is no room for improvisation. The selection is made according to strict criteria that guarantee responsible and sustainable use of the resource. Only trees that have reached the appropriate maturity have straight trunks and ample diameters and show no signs of decay, pests or diseases that could compromise the quality of the final lumber are chosen. Once a tree meets these conditions, it is felled. At that moment, the tranquil atmosphere of the forest is shattered by the roar of chainsaws. The steel blades pierce the bark and the interior of the trunk, making a precise cut. After a few seconds of continuous work, the tree, sometimes as tall as a multi-story building, slowly bends and falls to the ground with a crash that marks the end of its natural cycle. That instant is symbolic. It represents the end of a biological process that took decades and the beginning of an industrial path that will transform that piece of the forest into a useful material for various industries. After falling, the tree is processed at the felling site. It is cut into more manageable sections, branches and irregular parts are removed, and the logs are prepared for transport. This is where large forestry machines come into play, equipped with hydraulic arms capable of lifting heavy logs with precision. These machines load the material onto reinforced trucks or rail cars adapted to handle enormous weights. The entire logistics process is designed with one clear objective, to prevent the logs from remaining exposed to the elements for too long, prolonged exposure to sun, rain or humidity can cause warping, fungal growth or loss of structural strength. Therefore, transport from the forest to the sawmill must be fast, coordinated and efficient. Every minute counts as preserving the logs quality is essential for obtaining high-performance timber. 
Under this system, the journey from the forest to industrial processing becomes a continuous chain where precision, speed and care determine the final quality of the product. Thus begins the long road that will transform a natural tree into an indispensable resource for construction, manufacturing and many other areas of modern life. However, behind this operation lies a debate that has persisted for decades. The origin of the logs. For a long time, the industry relied on old-growth forests with hundreds of years old trees that yielded dense, high-value timber. But given concerns about biodiversity and the impact of climate change, this model has been challenged. Nearly half of the world's forests have been logged or degraded by human activity, prompting a shift towards more controlled plantations, managed areas and secondary growth forests. These areas are cultivated following planned cycles that ensure a steady supply without putting as much pressure on the original ecosystems. This shift reflects an effort to balance economic growth with environmental commitment. That's why, from its very beginning, wood has represented much more than a freshly cut log. It symbolizes an ongoing challenge of how to maintain an essential industry without sacrificing sustainability. When the logs leave the forest, they are taken to the sawmill, a huge space where they are stacked in long rows waiting to be processed. To keep them in good condition, many sawmills constantly spray water on them or submerge them in ponds, preventing premature cracking and protecting them before they are transformed. From there, the logs move on to the sorting stage. Both workers and laser scanners identify the species, measure the diameter, check for defects and assess their overall quality. Logs with the best characteristics are destined for premium uses, while those with knots, curves or cracks are reserved for products where these imperfections are not a problem. Before cutting, many logs go through a debarker. The bark contains dirt, insects and other impurities that can damage saw blades or affect the final finish of the boards. This process is more common with softwoods like pine, fir or spruce, which are commonly used in construction due to their uniformity and stability. In artisan workshops, however, it may be omitted or applied after cutting, and in some cases the bark is left on to achieve a rustic finish. The debarker, by removing the outer layer of the trunk, generates a surprisingly large quantity of tiny wood chips. These particles are released as the machine removes the bark, which often contains soil, organic matter, and small impurities that cannot be retained during the sawing process. Although they may appear to be mere waste at first glance, each chip is collected in an orderly fashion by extraction systems and ducts that transport them to specific storage areas. Far from being a useless byproduct, these wood chips are part of a comprehensive forest resource utilization chain. They can later be used to manufacture particle board, MDF panels, agricultural compost, pellets for heating, or even as fuel in industrial boilers that require biomass. Once the log is ready, it's placed on a conveyor belt where a laser scanner travels its entire length. The beams capture every detail, diameter, deviations, curves and significant knots. Using this information, software creates a three-dimensional model and evaluates different cutting patterns. In just a few seconds, it determines the most efficient way to obtain the maximum amount of usable wood while maintaining quality. With this design complete, the log is moved to a high-powered band saw. There are two main cutting methods, the common parallel cut, which yields a larger volume but can produce boards more prone to warping, or the quarter cut, which first divides the log into four sections to obtain a more stable and uniform grain. The latter produces higher quality lumber, although it involves a lower yield and more labor. Both methods illustrate the constant balance between efficiency and durability. Once the method is selected, the cutting process begins. The immense steel blades come to life and separate the log into thick slabs, which are then carefully stacked to continue their journey along the production line. Throughout this process, an automated system monitors blade speed, vibration, the thickness of each cut, and any variations that could affect quality. The first rough boards emerge from the logs, marking the true beginning of their transformation. The slabs then go to precision saws where they are cut again into boards of the exact thickness required for their final use. Each cut is monitored by sensors that guarantee near-perfect accuracy. Next comes edging. Irregular edges are trimmed, creating straight lines that facilitate transport and assembly. Even the offcuts are recycled. They are used to make particle board, plywood or biomass systems. After these initial transformations, the boards still retain much of their natural moisture. To prevent future warping, they must be carefully dried in specialized kilns. 
they are stacked with small gaps between each board to allow for even circulation of hot air. Powerful fans push air into these chambers, regulating both the temperature and internal humidity. The goal of drying is to achieve an ideal moisture content, between 15% and 19% for construction, and between 6% and 8% for high-precision furniture. This step is essential to ensure that the wood is stable, strong and durable. Once drying is complete, the wood is transported to the packaging area. There, a series of automated systems stack the boards into uniform bundles. Hydraulic arms compress each batch, and the stacks are secured with steel bands or plastic straps. To protect them from moisture during transport, they are covered with plastic sheets or waterproof tarpaulins. Each bundle is labelled in detail, indicating its species, dimensions, production date and destination. While trucks load these stacks for distribution across the country, another part of production continues in a parallel process, the manufacture of MDF. Sawmill waste, chips, fibres, sawdust, is not discarded. It is shredded, cleaned and mixed with special resins. Then it is pressed at high temperatures and pressures to form homogeneous boards. After cooling and sanding, it becomes a stable, economical material widely used in furniture, interiors and construction. From the forests to the construction sites, wood undergoes a complex journey that combines tradition, technology, sustainability and industrial precision. Every board we see is the result of a meticulous process involving hundreds of people, advanced machinery and decisions that directly impact the economy and the environment.